13 siblings, a debut album at 13, winning Eurovision for Switzerland, and we haven't even gotten to My Heart Will Go On yet. Keep watching for the transformation of Celine Dion. Celine Dion was born on March 30, 1968, in Quebec, Canada. The infant returned to the family's home in the village of Charlemagne and lived with her parents and 13 siblings. 14 kids in your family, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I have four children. I thought I was going to go nuts. Maybe I will yet. <laughs> but 14. According to Celine, the authorized biography, the singer's name fittingly came from music. Her mom heard the name in the song Celine by Oug Oufre and chose it for her youngest daughter. But at first, baby Celine wasn't sure about music, at least not when it came from her siblings. She would cry when her brothers and sisters sang high-pitched notes to her. Celine shared a touching photo with her dad on Instagram in celebration of what would have been his 95th birthday in 2018. Two years later, Entertainment Tonight reported that her mother had died at the age of 92. To honor her late mother, Celine posted a photo of the entire 16-person Dion family. CNN reported that when Celine Dion was a young girl, her father Ademar earned $165 a week as a butcher to support the enormous family. Especially with so many children in the family, the Dions lived a very modest life. But none of this deterred the famous singer's natural abilities, and she used the dining room table as a stage when she was only two. Her brother Michelle booked a five-year-old Celine to sing at his wedding. Looking back on her performance at the ceremony, Celine Dion remembered singing a couple songs for the bride and groom. The gig would end up inspiring the young girl as she recalled to CNN, saying, When I started to feel the love and the warmth of the audience, it got me. I said to myself, this is what I want to do all my life. I want to be a singer. In fact, the star became so enamored with singing that she lost interest in most everything else. She would sing and stay up late enough to miss school. Celine also admitted to people, when I did go to school, I was always dreaming and singing in my head. During her childhood, Celine's many siblings would often use pots, pans, glasses, and anything else they could get their hands on as percussion instruments. The children would perform renditions of a wide variety of tunes, including French folk songs and songs from the English-speaking world, including artists such as Janis Joplin and the Beatles, according to Celine, the authorized biography. The author, Georges Hubert Germain, told CNN, She was raised in this family where the music was so important. Dion confirmed that they even performed in concerts near their Quebec home. She remembered as a young girl going to watch her parents and siblings play live. While she was supportive, Dion wasn't always enthralled by the shows, admitting to people, I'd sleep on chairs in restaurants and bars while they sang. Not long after, Dion herself became more interested in music, telling Time, my favorite game was to sing. But she wanted to go beyond just playing a game. Dion dropped out of school around the age of 15 to focus entirely on singing. She said classes and schoolwork were, quote, taking me away from music, from my happiness, from my dreams. According to CNN, in 1980, Celine Dion's mother co-wrote a song called It Was Only a Dream for 12-year-old Dion to perform. Dion's mom went even further and sent a tape of her daughter singing the tune to the Quebec-based music manager, René Angelil, who was so impressed that he invited Dion to perform in person. Dion told people that during her performance, Angelil started to cry. As a result, the music manager believed in Dion so much that he, quote, mortgaged his house to finance her first album. When she was 13 years old, Dion made her debut with an album whose title translates to the voice of God, in English. To promote herself as a new artist, Dion traveled with Angelil and her mom around the world, telling people, I missed my family and my home, but I don't regret having lost my adolescence. In her mind, it was all worth it because she was pursuing her dream. According to her official biography, Dion competed in the 1982 Yamaha World Popular Song Festival in Tokyo and won the gold medal at the age of 14. She continued an impressive run of performances and awards through her teenage years, becoming, quote, the first Canadian to be awarded a gold album in France, and sang for Pope John Paul II at Olympic Stadium in Montreal in 1984. But she would soon retreat from the public eye for a slight rebrand. According to CNN, Dion and her manager, Renee Angelil, 
decided to take an 18-month break from performing to improve her image, including her teeth, hairstyle, and wardrobe, as well as taking English lessons. To the delight of fans, she returned with the release of her album Incognito in 1987. It was the first of her albums to be released on a major record label. At 18 years old, Dion had a refreshed sound and look, shown off in the video for her single Lolita. Her former publicist, Mia Dumont, told CNN, All of a sudden, she had this body, these legs from here to there, and she was beautiful. People could see that she was beautiful. The Eurovision Song Contest has been a long-running and prestigious competition that showcases some of the brightest new musical acts in the world. Though she is Canadian, Dion represented Switzerland at the 1988 Eurovision Contest in Dublin, Ireland. Dion remembered about the experience on The Jonathan Ross Show, saying, It was a very strange adventure for me. It may have been strange, but it was undoubtedly successful. In front of 600 million viewers tuning in, Dion won. The victory was also lucrative for her manager, Renee, as Dion said on The Jonathan Ross Show that Angelil bet on her to win the contest. And I felt like I was a horse and I needed to race. Wow. I really needed to win that race. <laughs> Did you see me? Yeah. That was like this. The night of her Eurovision win was also a turning point for Dion romantically. According to CNN, around the age of 20, she shared her first kiss with Angelil. Around this time, Dion also tried her skills at acting. She appeared in the TV series, the French title of which translates to Flowers on the Snow, as one of two siblings who overcame a difficult childhood. Following a whirlwind decade of growing her audience and getting a taste of fame, Celine Dion was ready to storm the U.S. in the 90s. She released her first English album, Unison, in 1990. The single Where Does My Heart Beat Now was Dion's first song to land in the Billboard Hot 100's Top 10, peaking at number 4 on the chart. One year later, Dion once again broke into the top 5 spots on the chart with her song If You Asked Me To. As a native French speaker, Dion studied English to better create the songs on her album. The creative process came with a few misunderstandings and mix-ups along the way, but despite some difficulties with the finer points of English expressions, her language work paid off as Dion finally had her big breakthrough in the American market. She teamed up with singer Peebo Bryson for the title song to Disney's animated classic Beauty and the Beast. The beautiful duet earned Dion her first Grammy Award in 1992 for Best Pop Performance by a Duo with Vocals. And the following year, they sang the duet in Dion's first Grammys performance. One of her most iconic songs, The Power of Love, was an instant success for Celine Dion. The track became her first number one single on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and stayed on top for four weeks in 1994. That same year, Dion had another major milestone in her personal life when she married her longtime manager, Renee Angelil. At the time of their wedding, Dion was 26 years old and 26 years younger than her husband. The two were engaged in 1991 and turned their high-profile wedding into quite the spectacle. Dion and Angelil were married at the Notre Dame Basilica in Montreal, and the ceremony was broadcast on Canadian television. The following year, Dion showed that married life didn't slow down her musical success. She released the French record Dieu, which was literally called the French Album in the United States. Dion showed off her range and enlisted singer-songwriter Jean-Jacques Goldman for the project. Dieu was a smash hit and according to Dion's official biography, it became, quote, the biggest selling French album in history, selling 10 million copies around the world. Celine Dion found her way back to the top with her 1996 song, Because You Loved Me. The ballad reached the top spot on Billboard Hot 100 and stayed at the peak position for six weeks. Ultimately, the track became the best-performing song of her career on the charts. Rolling in the success, Dion went to Atlanta to sing at the Olympic Games. With 3.5 billion viewers tuning in from around the world, Dion belted out the power of the dream at the opening ceremony for the competition held at Centennial Olympic Stadium. The singer posted a photo on Facebook from the event, where she had a chance to meet her idol, Romanian gymnast Nadia Comaneci. Later that year, Dion once again delivered a masterpiece with the powerful ballad, It's All Coming Back to Me Now, which according to Billboard, reached number two on the chart. 
Her 1996 album, Falling Into You, won Best Pop Album and Album of the Year at the Grammy Awards and went on to sell more than 30 million copies. She performed the smash from the album Because You Loved Me at the 1997 Oscar Awards. But she also, quote, became the first artist to perform two songs during the Oscars by being a last-minute stand-in for Natalie Cole, who was sick with the flu. With just a day of notice and reading from sheet music, Dion performed I've Finally Found Someone. James Cameron's 1997 masterpiece, Titanic, concludes with one of the most iconic movie songs ever, My Heart Will Go On. But the track almost never made it to the big screen, because Cameron was against the idea of having a pop song at the end of his film. Behind the scenes, the composers created the song with Celine Dion's booming voice and tried to convince the director. According to Vogue, the song's writer, James Horner, said, quote, that he carried the tape in his pocket for four weeks, waiting for the moment when he caught Cameron in an unusually good mood. Also, Dion's husband, Rene, convinced the song's creators to have Dion on the track. She told Billboard, I wanted to choke my husband because I didn't want to do it. I, I, I didn't want to record the song. You didn't want to do that song? No. My heart will go on? No. <gasps> I'm sorry. Despite not feeling her best on her trip to the recording studio, Dion still showed up, although reluctantly, saying, I thought, sing the song, then get the heck out of there. But the song, of course, perfectly complemented the film, which went on to be the highest grossing film ever until 2010. The radio version of the song then won the 1998 Grammy Awards for Record of the Year and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. And in 2017, Dion performed the song on its 20th anniversary at the Billboard Music Awards. At the start of the new millennium, Celine Dion was continuing to thrive as a musician. But while she was at the top of the music industry, Dion made the decision to take an extended hiatus. According to CNN, she disappeared from the public eye in early 2000 and entered a busy and difficult time in her personal life. The singer reportedly stepped away from entertainment to start a family and said, It was a must. I had to take those two years. I have met life for the first time. In January 2001, Dion gave birth to her first son, René Charles Angelil, named after her husband. It was a difficult journey for the singer as CNN reported that she went through fertility treatments and two operations to improve her chances of conceiving. At the time, the new mom planned to take at least two years off and even hinted at four before returning to show business. The hiatus didn't stop Dion from coming back in an epic way. She signed on to become the resident singer at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace Casino in Las Vegas in 2003. Her residency, called A New Day, lasted until 2007. The spectacle reportedly earned $385.1 million for Dion's 714 performances, and according to The Hollywood Reporter, it's still the highest-grossing Las Vegas residency for a musician. Prior to the birth of her first son, Celine Dion explained that she hoped for more children. During an interview on Quebec's TVA television network, the singer said a New York fertility clinic had another fertilized in vitro embryo of hers, so she was hoping her upcoming son would have a twin. This came true quite literally during her second pregnancy, when Dion announced that she was having twin boys. In a briefly scary moment, Billboard reported that Dion was admitted to a hospital leading up to her delivery. Fortunately, the singer then gave birth in October 2010 to her twins, sons Nelson and Eddie. According to Dion's official biography, the newborns had a Las Vegas baptism 10 days prior to their mother's next gig. This started her second residency at the famous Caesars Palace Casino. Between the first and second residencies, The Hollywood Reporter claimed that Dion attracted 4.5 million people to her shows. Her impressive star power in the city led the way for performers like Adele and Britney Spears to later have their own Las Vegas residencies. Cementing her status among other great performers in Vegas history, Dion concluded her residency in a truly memorable fashion. According to The Hollywood Reporter, her final show concluded with, quote, an epic finale that delivered a 20-song, hit-studded set that didn't just pull at heartstrings, but gently unraveled them. During Celine Dion's hiatus from entertainment starting in 2000, she told CNN, I was with my husband who needed me the most at this period of his life. 
The previous year, Renee Angelil was diagnosed with throat cancer. This started Angelil's struggle with the disease, and he had a tumor removed in 2013. But the following year, his cancer returned. People reported that Celine Dion focused on her husband throughout his three rounds of cancer, and she explained her decision to postpone shows, saying, When I stopped performing, I wanted to be just a wife and a mother. She candidly went on to share with the outlet in 2015, saying, I am scared of losing him, because it's bad. But I have to show myself, my husband, and my kids that I'm strong and we're okay. The Mirror reported that one of Angelil's final wishes was to see Dion perform, so he watched a live stream of her Las Vegas performances. She said the shows made him happy toward the end of his life. The situation clearly gave My Heart Will Go On extra meaning when directed at Angelil. Knowing Angelil grew sicker each day, she said, quote, What kept me going was that I thought of him. I did it for him. Sadly, in January 2016, Angelil died of throat cancer at the age of 73. According to The Guardian, two days after Celine Dion's husband, Renee Angelil, died, her older brother Daniel also died from cancer. In the aftermath of the two losses, Dion turned to an unexpected source to help heal her wounds. She started a handbag line and took a huge interest in extravagant fashion, telling people, it's amazing how a little bit of fantasy can alter our moods. I've always loved fashion from as far back as I can remember. But as everyone knows, I've gone through some extremely difficult times in recent years. And I suppose that I'm spreading my wings a little bit more these days and doing so with the help of beautiful clothing and accessories. In 2019, Dion was a true fashionista as she went to many couture and fashion week shows throughout the year, donning outfits from the biggest names in fashion. Six years after releasing her album, Loved Me Back to Life, Celine Dion released her next English language album, Courage, in 2019. The lyrics often focused on heartbreak, since the album was her first to be fully produced after the death of her husband, René Angelil. Also in 2019, Dion concluded her second residency at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. According to The Hollywood Reporter, over the course of 16 years, Dion performed at 1,141 shows at the casino's concert venue. Continuing her domination in Sin City, Celine Dion announced on Facebook that she was heading back to Las Vegas for performances starting in 2021 at the Resorts World Theater. After eight months of preparing for her return to the stage, unfortunately the singer had to cancel her first two sets of performances, sharing the news on Instagram that Dion was dealing with severe muscle spasms. Though she couldn't perform as planned in 2021, Dion reached a seriously impressive milestone of 40 years in the music industry. On June 11, 2021, Dion revealed on Instagram that it was the 40th anniversary of her first single. With her long run in entertainment and global appeal, Dion racked up a huge bank account. Thanks mostly to blockbuster contracts for her Las Vegas residencies, Dion was worth an estimated $800 million in 2021, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite musicians are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.